Welcome to the SMB Tech Innovators Podcast, powered by Gusto. On this show, we explore the intersection of fintech, vertical SaaS, and how software combats the rising complexity of running a business. Our goal is to share stories, advice, and best practices from the leaders and investors behind today's cutting-edge platforms. On this episode of the SMB Tech Innovators Podcast, my guest is Jim McGinnis. He's the president of growth of Affinipay, a financial services company that is changing the way professionals get paid. Affinipay is the parent to several companies like LawPay, CPA Charge, and ClientPay, and now my case, where Jim was previously CEO. Jim, you know we've we've known each other f- for some time. Uh, first, thanks for being on the show, and, and congrats on the acquisition. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I, I know a lot of uh, our listeners are, are curious about that, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, but I, I want to start um, talking about you. You have this really interesting background uh, from starting to, if I remember, selling beer to working for one of the largest CPG companies in the world, uh, and then you landed in tech. I, I'd love to to uh, have you share a little bit about your, your background and how you ended up at my case um, where you became the CEO. Uh, thanks for asking. You know, everybody loves to talk about themselves. And so I could go on for the whole podcast, but I won't. Uh, yeah, I have, a, have had a little bit unusual career. I started with the Boston Beer Company, maker of Sam Adams, way back in 1987, when it was the nadir of uh, breweries in the United States. And since then, the craft brewery industry, as you know, has, has taken off uh, extraordinarily. Learned how to sell in that position and had a great time getting to know uh, Jim Cook and the entrepreneurial side of, of things there. And then uh, went back to business school, fell in love with marketing, and I spent over 11 years with Procter and Gamble, uh, first in uh, Cincinnati, and then I was, believe it or not, in uh, places as far flung as Guangzhou, China, and Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, switched horses to, to PepsiCo, sold orange juice, so I can tell you how to get stains out of your clothes or how to make orange juice. <laughs> Did that for a few years with uh, Tropicana there in Chicago. And then an old buddy uh, from P&G days invited me uh, to help lead a division of Activision. So I got into video games, which was very cool. And my nieces and nephews loved me dearly, um, uh, making games for things like Tony Hawk and James Bond. And then I truly took a cocktail party slide and went into tax software with Intuit. Uh, But that's where I I got involved with... um, technology very deeply. And I got to know the accounting profession. Uh, and, and ultimately, that's what led me to where I am now. Um, when my case was carved out of that folio and they were looking for a CEO, I was invited to lead my case uh, starting last year, January of uh, 2021. Has, has any of your experiences from your time at, at Procter & Gamble, um, any of the lessons that you've learned from your time there apply to what you do every day today? Absolutely. Uh, I would recommend any young person getting experience at an academy-like uh, company like P&G because you take those lessons with you forever. I, t- I give you two right off the top. One is uh, superior products. Uh, Procter & Gamble is passionate about ensuring that all their products are the best in the market. And in every role that I've had, I have always challenged the team to ensure that our products were the best that they could be. The other is uh, getting very close to and listening to the, the customer. A.G. Laffley, the former CEO of P&G, used to talk about the customer as boss. And I've taken that philosophy with me ever since. It's uh, I, I interned uh, at Procter & Gamble and, and what you sh- what you shared uh, completely resonates me. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, superior products uh, for, for sure. I I was curious about your your jump from selling beer and then working for a software company. I know there was uh, like what made from consumer companies to going into tech. What, what were you thinking about that change? Well, I was always a tech guy. Uh, the reason I was invited to join Activision was this, the then CFO of Activision, Thomas Tipple, and I had connected our computers up with LAN cables to play video games in hotel rooms in Guangzhou, China in 1996. So I always was into technology, but um, really, it's been very exciting to come across. And uh, I'll just give you another quick story. Uh, I had the privilege to work under Scott Cook at Intuit, and he also is a P&G guy, and he shared with me the differences between uh, software and consumer packaged goods 
uh, and very quickly, consumer packaged goods, uh, they're inexpensive and the benefit is right there. You open the bottle and you can smell the shampoo. But with technology, the promise, the benefit is down the road. First, you have to go through that divot of learning the software and, and changing your habits. And so I've always been passionate about helping our customers get as quickly as possible to that first moment of truth, the, the benefit of the product. Easy when you're selling detergent, difficult when you're selling software. Yeah, for sure. I, I um, Are you are you now a, a craft beer, beer person or are you uh, true to your roots uh, with, with Sam Adams? No, I absolutely love IPAs. I, I kicked myself for not having in, uh, been part of their introduction way back in the 80s, but I'm a huge dogfish head fan. <laughs> I have to ask. I had to, I had to ask. I have friends that uh, work at uh, worked at Coors and uh, they're they, they, they stick by their their brand of Coors. Um, you've uh, you mentioned Intuit uh, and having a stint uh, at Intuit where where and where you became passionate about the accounting profession. And, you know, you've been a leader in the financial service industry for, for quite some time. And as I was uh, learning more ab about you uh, beyond what the conversations we've had, you were even selected for being the top 100 most influential uh, people in the accounting industry sort of three years running uh, while you were at Intuit. Uh, now you're at Infinipay. You're leading a company that builds products uh, for, for the legal profession. You know, how would you describe your approach to building building financial services products and what's different when you think about uh, the legal market particularly? Yeah, uh, love that question. And it, it always leads me to the sort of fun stuff, which is uh, I was passionate about helping uh, accountants, particularly smaller uh, bookkeepers and accountants who were pro advisors at Intuit moved to the cloud and and my vision and and uh, evangelism for that I think led to that position on the the list. I'm not a CPA nor have any accounting background. My wife, however, is one, and we used to joke around the house that I had risen to the top of her profession. Um, <laughs> the uh, the the fun though I think is that uh, particularly on the small side of things, both accountants and lawyers are really small business owners and uh, they are passionate about helping their clients succeed. And that's what uh, I've been about ever since, whether it's QuickBooks or or my case or now uh, law pay in particular, even CPA charge, helping professionals better serve their clients. I, uh, it's it's you're now you're now at Affinipe, um, which uh, and you had a, a stint at at my case before it got acquired. Uh, Lots going on in payments. Uh, I know Finipe has, has been on the the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies for 10 years straight. Uh, but I have to ask you, when when markets think about payments, they think of, of Stripe. Like, how is Finipe standing out differently in, in this market? And there's so many payment processing companies. Like, how are you all standing out? That's, it's a great question as well. Um, uh, look, I think the future is uh, the verticalization of these things. And, you know, Stripe is an excellent product and it's used by, you know, many, many people. What makes LawPay and uh, other Affinipay products really special is that they solve the particular needs of the vertical that we serve. I'll give you an example. Uh, for um, LawPay, we're very aware of the importance of compliance with trust accounting. And so uh, we make it, we make it uh, very easy for lawyers to make sure that their trust accounts are inviolable. Uh, they're able to move payments uh, very easily uh, to either their operating or trust accounts and keep them separate. Also, uh, we will uh, hold on, we will uh, hold on to the fees until the end of the month. So when they get the, uh, uh, the payment from their client, it goes directly into their appropriate account only at the end of the month do we charge them the fees for the for the credit uh, credit card payments. That's really important, both for compliance. It definitely comes out of the operating account, not the trust account, and also for bookkeeping. It makes it super easy. Now, something like uh, Stripe, which is a generalist solution, does things differently, uh, which is um, good enough for everybody, but ours is excellent for the people we serve. So, I mean, you mentioned something that is a uh, that's. Uh pretty, pretty important to kind of double click into is the, the shift to 
vertical specific solutions I mean, and, and payments uh, effectively with LawPay and, and Stripe. Do you think that's just going to happen across every industry? Uh, it, you know, every I, back in my Procter and Gamble days, I learned to avoid totalities. So every <laughs> okay, there's a little is, lesson there is a, is a difficult word to say, but I think many, if not most, industries absolutely. You know, everybody's a little bit different how they do their accounting, how they serve their customers, what their specific needs are, and if someone can better serve them, uh, you know, why not? I'll I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, LawPay is recommended by all 50 state bar associations because we're the most compliant and easiest to use for lawyers. So there's an uh, example of verticalization. My case uh, acquired a couple of really interesting smaller practice management solutions. One is CasePeer, which better serves personal injury lawyers than even my case can or any of our competitors. And also we acquired DocketWise, which better serves immigration firms. Now, personal injury are different because they deal with settlements and, and a lot of litigation and need to keep track of uh, you know, medical costs and, and data. Uh, that's just not something generalist lawyers do. And in DocketWise, it's very form intensive. And so DocketWise uh, or immigration is very form intensive. So DocketWise is um, built around smart forms that makes it easy for the immigration lawyers to collect the data that they need. So uh, I think that the specific solutions will always uh, ultimately beat the generalist horizontal solutions. And, and so what's interesting, you know, you talked about my case, so obviously, you know, you were there, uh, you know, through the acquisition, you know, my wife's an attorney. And, you know, when I think about the legal profession, you know, it's not considered the first place, uh, the sort of first market that that is thinking about innovation and adopting new software. I'd love to understand how how you are seeing what's happening in the legal market that's driving companies to invest in technology like LawPay uh, and my case. Yeah, you know, the uh, uh, the trend is there and, and I have shared before and I'll share again my vision for where things are heading. It starts with moving to the cloud and the reason for that is you get your data out from that little prison under your desk that's your hard drive up where uh, it's safe and secure and can be used. That leads to a single platform solution where all the data gets entered once and used many times by all the relevant applications. From there, you get automation. And that's why people do it in the end is because it allows them uh, to be more productive, get more work done, serve their clients better uh, uh, with less hours. And many of these industries, particularly the professional, are in a billable model. And then finally, all of that unlocks the stuff that uh, is beyond the scope of today's conversation, but the, the really advanced technologies like AI and ML. So that, I think, is the future. Um, legal profession may be a little bit behind. I remember 10 years ago, I was trying to convince accountants that they were going to move to the cloud and away from things like QuickBooks Desktop. And I, it was like a scene in Shrek. They were going to take me out with pitchforks and uh, torches. But now the accounting profession is very much there. The legal profession may be a few years behind, but not many. So I think the uh, continued investment by by so many, uh, the improved solutions that are coming out uh, and the ease of adoption that we're all working on will accelerate the trend towards uh, those four steps that I talked about just then. So, Jim, you now uh, you've. You know, my case is now part of a uh, and and I'm curious about what led to the to this opportunity for you all. I mean, it, it seems like my case was doing really, really well. And uh, the market, as you stated, is shifting to the cloud. And the time is now, like what led to uh, this opportunity for you all? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we never intended to go so quickly. Uh, when we were carved out of Appfolio, uh, the intent was to invest in go to market and product and accelerate our growth. And, and we did. We were growing uh, very nicely and had acquired four companies uh, and thought it was going to be a good long run when we were approached by Affinipay, the parents of LawPay. Uh, they shared our vision of verticalization of software and the importance of embedded fintech in that software. And uh, look, with, with a few conversations, it, it really became apparent we were great together. They have the best payments offering in the business and a lot of innovation in fintech uh, with over like 9.5 out of 10 on ease of use. They're, they're fantastic. Um, I mentioned before the 50 state bars that recommend them. So they're a great solution. And then, you know, my case with a more than 60 net promoter 
um, and increasing adoption uh, was a good fit for them. At the end of the day, it came down to the customers. Together, we have 65,000 customers. We serve over 200,000 legal professionals. And the cross-sell opportunities are amazing. Less than 50% of my case customers are penetrated with um, a law pay uh, or payment solution. And over 30,000 of law pays firms do not currently use a modern uh legal practice management solution. And so uh, the opportunity to work together, to focus our innovation and ultimately sell into each other's bases, made this a legal tech marriage made in heaven. There's a, there's a lot that's happening in the, the legal sort of technology market. I know there's lots of investments um, happening. We, we, uh, I saw that Filevine raised uh, uh, some money recently. I know that Clio is another uh, player in this market, and and clearly there's there's obviously acquisitions you all have done through through my case, uh, my case, and and now uh, you know being part of the the law pay uh, my case partnership. Like, what do you think it's going to look like in five years? I mean, do we think that there is going to be multiple billion dollar companies in legal, and and, um, and where are we on this uh, on this on this journey? Yeah, uh, it's only going to accelerate. There's an enormous amount of value still to be created. Uh, a very large number of, of uh, firms that don't have a complete uh, workflow and, and fintech stack. Uh, there's a lot of private equity money uh, and other money coming in, investing in it. And the reason they invest is because there's so much value to be shared with the end customer. Um and uh, some of the areas that I talked about before about productivity and automation and eventually the, the advanced technologies means that this is only going to accelerate. Um, there are, there will be many uh, multi-billion dollar uh, companies. We're, we're now together with uh, Finipay. My case is a double unicorn. We're the largest in the space, uh, but there are others out there that have achieved unicorn status. And I'm confident over the next five years, uh, it'll be uh, more than two handfuls. What, what are the areas that uh, you think require more innovation in, in legal tech? Like, you know, if you had to sort of think about areas that are more green space, where do you think are, is really interesting for, for you uh, and even uh, my case overall? Yeah. Uh, so I, th I think there are three. One is I'm, I'm uh, passionate about three areas. One is, and it sounds crazy, but uh, lawyers, so much of their time is doc document management. So I think document automation, helping them uh, collect the data, create the documents, uh, uh, manage the documents and, and get them signed and filed. All that, that end-to-end -end workflow on documents is very important in the legal space. Uh, the second is, as I mentioned before, uh, many of these firms are small businesses and they need and want help uh, finding clients, uh, bringing the right clients in and helping to make them as profitable as they can. Uh, and so I think, uh, Customer intake and client management uh, is the second. And then the third, uh, and where the combination with LawPay and Affinipay makes so much sense, is the area about fintech. Uh, there's so much wonderful innovation going on there. A great example is LawPay recently introduced client credit, which is a buy now, pay later um, uh, offering specific for the law, uh, for the legal profession. So as we bring more of these, I think, very powerful uh, embedded fintech ideas uh, to market, I think we can help our law firms better serve their clients uh, end to end. The, the, you mentioned embedded fintech products. I mean, the, the, a lot of this is relatively new. I mean, you all are pioneers in this area as well um, with, with LawPay. How, how do you, uh, putting your product hat on, which I know you do all the time as, 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 uh, as we always chat about, like how do you measure the benefit of embedded fintech products uh, as you, and how do you make the choice of what to work on uh, over the other alternatives as you make product investments? Uh, that absolutely is the hardest, uh, hardest thing. Um, uh, and it, I think it comes from uh, three places. The, the first is, uh, you know, scans of the marketplace, not just the legal profession, but where innovation is headed in various areas. And, you know, buy now, pay later, client credit is a great example of this. This is coming up in so many sort of consumer spaces, it only makes sense to make it available in the legal profession as well. The second is 
uh, scans for big problems to be solved. Uh, an example of this is we're launching accounting in just a few days on in my case, because uh, we heard from our customers that they would like a an integrated accounting solution where their time and billing, uh, their general ledger and their payments are all uh, right there in front of them uh, uh, in their practice management solution. So that would be the second. And then the third, it's a constant interaction with our customers to understand their problems. We get uh, hundreds, if not thousands of suggestions across the business of little things that we can do to improve the, the product. And so we're, we're on a you know, bi-weekly release cycle uh, where you, you have to keep up with all the great things that we're launching. Well, first of all, c congrats again on the, the acquisition. Excited about uh, where the legal market is going and uh, with uh, now my case being part of, of Infinipay and what you're doing with LawPay. I want to... Uh, switch gears to just talk about the SMB market uh, overall. And, and you know, you have a long career uh, building uh, and marketing uh, software for small businesses and, and more recently with in the legal profession. What do you think is the biggest challenge uh, today selling software to, to small businesses? Undoubtedly, the biggest challenge in selling software to small businesses is make it really easy for them to use and adopt. Uh, one of the real competitive advantages that my case has had is speed to that first benefit. So getting their data in, uh, showing them around, making sure that uh, when they get stuck, they can find their way uh, to, to solve the problems themselves. So ease of use, ease of uh uh, adoption are the the number one things, and if we ever find any sticky points, that becomes a number one priority for us to fix. Well, ease of use is something that uh, certainly resonates uh, with uh, how we approach things uh, within uh, here at Gusto. Um, I, I want to be mindful of your time. Uh, we appreciate uh, all that you have done for the legal industry, the accounting industry. Uh, and Jim, if anybody wants to connect and, and contact you, what's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, uh, it's really fun. You know, I've been worked for a very large, I have worked for very large companies over the years, but my case is still a little place. So you can always get me at jim.mcginnis at mycase.com. Uh, and let me know what it's about. I'm not always the best person to answer the question, but I'm pretty good at, uh, uh air traffic control. So I'll make sure either I or somebody gets back to you. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, there will be links to any resources mentioned in today's shows and to show notes. And thanks again for listening and keep a uh, lookout for the next episode. Uh, and thanks, uh, Jim, again for your time. Thanks so much for having me. This has been great fun. Thank you for listening to the SMB Tech Innovators podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review and subscribe to enjoy future episodes.